citizen science and engaging people and opening science is a very broad topic with uh, very many distinct aspects. The aspects of uh, licensing and uh, legal aspects, the aspects of, as we just heard, funding, uh, the aspects of how to engage people and how uh, is it possible for people to engage. And this is uh, one topic of our next speaker, Alexandra Vagu from the Citizen Cyber Lab, who is telling us about uh, the approach of the Citizen Cyber Lab and I think also about a game and playful approach to citizen science and do-it-yourself science. Please, welcome Alexandra. Hello everyone. Um, I'm uh, Alexandre from the Cree, and uh, I'm a collaborator of the Citizen Cyber Lab project. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, Science for All and All for Science today. Next slide, please. Uh, so at the Citizen Cyber Lab, we are a EU project who is uh, mainly constructing uh, digital tools to enhance creativity, but also uh, learning for um, citizen scientists and um, around the world. Um, you may have heard of uh, crowdsource uh, gaming, uh, such as on the, on the left uh, Foldit. So for the people who don't know Foldit, uh, it's uh, actually a puzzle game, a video game, uh, where you unfold proteins and you give uh, data to scientists uh, by uh, doing so. On the right, another very famous crowdsourcing game is uh, iWire. Uh, it has been built by a scientist, uh, a former scientist uh, at the MIT. And uh, basically, here you are uh, doing some um, pattern matching and uh, essentially a small casual game where you map the um, neuronal path of a retina. And uh, all this contribution through gaming is um, real help for scientists. Uh, so at the Cree and with the Citizen Cyber Lab, we are taking the same path. And basically, we built a game that, that the, the name is uh, Irocoli. Uh, Irocoli is um, on uh, synthetic biology. Uh, what is synthetic biology? It's an emerging field. It's uh, basically uh, working on uh, genomic uh, you know, manipulation. And uh, here you are a little bacteria, uh, and you are solving some puzzles in an adventure game. Um, and uh, you are basically floating in a little world where you gather a piece of DNA and uh, you are crafting like uh, you would in Minecraft uh, some new uh, capacity for your bacteria such as uh, bioluminescence or speed essentially. Um, next slide please. Uh, but uh, it's, it's not all. It's, it's not just solving puzzles. It's also simulating some of the, the stuff biologists can do in the lab. So, for example, here we built in the game a repressilator. That is basically a bacteria that is blinking. Uh, and uh, the, the game itself is a, is a simulation and uh, can be used for educational purpose, for research purpose, and uh, is for the moment under development by Raphael Gouget. Uh, you can uh, find him actually in the last, uh, last uh, slide. Um, anyway, uh, let's continue. <laughs> uh, at the Cyber Lab, we are also building some tools, as I said at the beginning. So here is Redwire. So it's a game platform where you can remix, mash up, and uh, just uh, mess up uh, games that are existing on the platform and learn new, new you know, techniques in game design and uh, programming. Uh, it's based on JavaScript. It's uh, entirely available in a web browser. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, here you can see um, the editor of the game. So how it works. It's basically a breadboard you can see on the bottom mid. And um, you are just moving chips around. It's uh, visual programming. And you can uh, take some piece of code from a game and include it in another game and uh, make a mashup of game. Another cool feature is that you can actually um, record your game uh, activity and uh, change the parameters in real time. So the memory, the, the code, the assets, graphics, everything. Next slide. Um, 
on the top of that, uh, if you want to play a game and be useful, you need to analyze the data you're getting from the game. So that's why we built another open source tool named Redmetrics. Uh, it's usable with the Redwire uh, game platform and game engine, but you can also use it actually with all the game engine out there. So if you know maybe Unity 3D, um, I don't know, CryEngine, what, whatever, whatever you want to use it. So it's uh, forkable on uh, GitHub, and uh, basically we're getting data for the player's activity, so uh, if they are stuck on a level, if they just found a bug, if, I don't know, uh, the number of clicks they are making, where they are making the clicks. Um, the data is kind of raw, so you have to uh, understand it and, you know, make it uh, useful. But uh, the tool is out there, so use it. Next slide, please. Um, and uh, on the top of that, oh, there is a funny image. Uh, uh, we are creating uh, in real life events. So we are we are based in Paris. Uh, the CRI is uh, part of the Paris Descartes University. And um, since we have a, a, a cool community of scientists around and also a game cat creator, sorry, uh, um, community, we decided to bring them together because they don't really know how to speak to each other to create uh, cool uh, content and cool games for science. So we organized this game jam events. Uh, on the left, you can find the, the last game jam we, um, we organized at the Mozilla Space in Paris. So the team was based on light and uh, bioluminescence in particular. And uh, the link uh, below, oh, actually on the bottom, you, you can find uh, all the games that have been made and uh, posted online. So since it was at Mozilla, it was open source. We tend to do open source, open source stuff at the CRI. Um, so yeah, please find uh, everything over there. Um, and uh, the pixelated image on the right is uh, another game jam we made because it's not only virtual and you know video games. We also make um, games that are feasible, like board games and stuff. Uh, here it was uh, another game jam of uh, two hours. So it's board games making for two hours, then one hour of uh, not debugging, but uh, like you know, you give feedback to other teams, you play other games, and the team was uh, the economics and the development the concept of development in economics. And uh, it, it works pretty well, and uh, we post all the rules for the games online, so you can find the games and you know play it, uh, upgrade it, contact uh, who created the games, and maybe useful you know to empower you as citizen and future scientists or learners. Uh, next slide, please. Um, oh, another pixelated slide, anyway. Um, so, <laughs> Since we, we saw all the struggles uh, that the game making community, the citizen uh, and the, um, the science community have to, to speak together, we decided to create a curriculum uh, that is the GLASS. So it's a, a game lab summer school because at the CRI we also have a game lab where we foster all the you know, energy in game making and scientific stuff. Um, so this uh, scientific creation, game creation camp will be running this summer for the first time. And uh, it's, it's inter interdisciplinary. So we are merging the programming, the game design, the art, and also the science to create games in like four weeks. And uh, we're also teaching skills uh, to the students uh, for a month. Uh, next slide. Um, so uh, I wish to acknowledge all the partners at the Cyber Lab. Uh, I could not talk about everything that is uh, running at the Cyber Lab. It's, it's it's a big uh, EU project, so I wish you can go to the, the citizencyberlab.eu website and find uh, everything else that is made over there. And uh, thank you for lis listening. I will be uh, here uh, tomorrow as well if you have any question and you want to talk with me about this topic. Thank you. Thank you a lot, Alexandre.